Crypto King is not a financial advisor. Choco Colombia. That's what I'm talking about. Out here on these photos, riding in a different part of the country of the uh, country of Colombia, loving my life right now. I hope you love yours too. Welcome family, and thank you for tuning in to Learn Crypto TV. So today I wanna to talk about Colombia and crypto adoption within Colombia. As you can see, I'm in located in Quito, Colombia, which is the capital of Choco, the state within the country of Colombia. And it has the largest concentration of Afro-Colombians from the African dysphoria here in this area. However, the infrastructure in Quito is subpar they have minimal internet services and connections for wi-fi services and also there are other various things that will require a city to function properly that needs to be either developed or upgraded but as far as the banks are concerned or the financial region then let's see how or why colombia could be the next crypto haven for places such as Kibdo. Let's take a look at the article. The emergence of blockchain has presented huge opportunities for governments and businesses to enhance transparency, do away with intermediaries, and reduce transactions costs. But beyond the blockchain technology, it has fueled development of innovative solutions in different sectors. Most notable innovations include live trade for portfolio optimization, optimization coupon for marketing in, of digital asset coupons, and one network for securing social media interactions. You are allowance for family smart contracts. Others are HFC coin, a mortgage lending and investing platform for mortgage backed securities, and Nose coin, a platform that is focused on interactive marketing. As cryptocurrency industry grows, government interest in the industry is increasingly becoming evident. While some countries have reacted hastily to stifle the cryptocurrency industry in their borders, several governments have taken steps to create a conducive environment for industries to, to thrive. Learn Crypto TV family, what's happening with you on this lovely Friday morning? Um, coming from you to from location here in Colombia called Quibdo, Colombia. It's in the state of Choco, and it's the largest concentration of our people, meaning the uh, melanated skin people. So, you know, today I'm going to uh, show you around the city, show you a few uh, sights and sounds, and then, you know, give you, uh, show you the reason why I'm actually here. So, um, with that being said, first I'm going to start off by showing y'all my hotel room because in Kibdo, there's not a, eh, there's some options, but you know, for the type of amenities that I know most people like, this probably is going to be the best hotel for you. And one of those amenities is hot water. A lot of people like taking uh, hot showers and stuff like that. And in a town like this or Pueblo, such as this one, you know, in other locations, other Airbnbs, you probably wouldn't be privy to find any of those, uh, you know, hot water uh, running places. But I have managed to find one. So I'm going to show it off to you now. So check it out.
One such country is Malta, which has already put in place legal framework to facilitate the growth of the crypto industry. But this island nation isn't the only country seeking to attract cryptocurrency businesses. Recently, Colombia joined the list of such countries after its newly elected president, Petro, expressed strong interest in cutting edge technologies like blockchain. Speaking at an annual international conference on information technology in Colombia, the president admitted that he is obsessed with technology. He noted that the advanced technologies such as blockchain have the potential to prevent corruption in public finance due to its transparency and difficulty in tampering. To boast growth in the country's cryptocurrency industry, the president has strong financial sector background indicated that the information in technology companies that set up the base in Colombia will be exempted from paying ta taxes for the first five years of operation. However, this will only happen if they generate a set number of jobs for the local people. The tax relief is expected to apply to companies within the cryptocurrency landscape and distributed ledger technology. All right, fam, so you saw the room, you know, that's our room with king size bed in it. You know, got the internet connection hooked up. So if you got an ethernet cable, you can plug directly into it to maintain connection. You don't have to lose connection on Wi-Fi and stuff like that, you know, and it has hot water. So, you know, everything's pretty clean. It's not a five-star hotel, but it's sufficient and it'll do the job. And it happens to be directly across the street from the airport. So I'll show you guys that when I get outside. I actually can show you a little bit of it right now, you know, since I'm headed down. I'm gonna go up to the building because, I mean, go up to the top floor because when you stay here, it comes with breakfast. And the breakfast is actually pretty good. You know, I was actually rather shocked. But check out the airport. The initial move by Colombia points to the creation of enabling environments for companies in the cryptocurrency and blockchain technology space. However, according to Jack Bremerson, Chief Compliance Officer at BlockFest, it will take time and political will to establish Colombia as a crypto-friendly country like Malta. He says, Malta has established itself as the most crypto and ICO friendly jurisdiction in the world by making it hospitable for providing incentives for such companies to operate. Some of the largest crypto exchanges, for example, have moved their entire operations to Malta to do business in their blockchain and crypto space. It takes time to political will and establish a region as one of them being aggressive and having the regulatory infrastructure to enable such an environment. On his part, Raghav Reggie Giraffe, CEO of GAF3R, says that Colombia could be positioning itself as the next haven for blockchain-based companies. Similar to Bremerson, he underscores the need for the country to develop crypto-friendly policies and a legal environment to back the already encouraging initial sign. He notes, if Colombia continues to create policies which are beneficial for both blockchain and cryptocurrencies, Colombia could very well be poised to position itself as the next haven for blockchain-based companies. While the initial announcements are encouraging from the financial perspective, they would also have to create a friendly regulatory environment which will help a deal with the regulatory ambiguity that currently exists. It could also attract companies by offering direct support from the government in forms of grants, funding, and facilitating access to industries where blockchain could be used. This, in turn, could help fuel mainstream adoption.
right, fam. So what you just saw was the uh, restaurant area. It's called Boga. Boga is the restaurant. Actually, you can see it right here. That's the name. Boga right there behind me and stuff. So that's the restaurant that's inside the... Um... <laughs> it's the restaurant that's inside the uh, hotel. So basically, and you can hit a little dog in here. So obviously, the hotel is pet friendly. <laughs> It wasn't really expecting that to occur, but uh, anyhow, you know, it's a um, uh, rather unique situation. I thought the breakfast was actually pretty good. It's just um, one way to cut your expenses, you know, when you um, traveling. If you ever travel to Quito, you know, if you stay at this particular hotel, then you know you'll be able to have breakfast to go along with it. I probably won't eat any dinner here, you know, because it's just easier for me to get it out in the street. But uh, you know, and plus I want to be able to experience Quito and you know the pacifico comida all right pacific food that's what i said so but anyway um i catch y'all outside i show y'all what the building outside look like and uh you know and then we'll go from there get the day started here are some interesting facts about cryptocurrency information in colombia so about 6.1 percent of colombians own cryptocurrency so how many exact how many people exactly or owners are there in Colombia that creates the 6.1%? That is an estimated total of over 3.1 million people in its population that owns cryptocurrency. Alright fam, so I'm just outside the uh, hotel and right next connected right next to it is I guess it's called a little mall plaza or whatever it got a bunch of little shops and stores in here and stuff like that you know where you come in they have a olympico olympica here olympica is a grocery store it's like a i don't know you can find a lot of different things and it's kind of like a a souped up walmart for y'all in america who know what mall walmart is so but anyway it's, it, it's like that you know what i'm saying well it's another one called exito in the country of colombia but right here i didn't i haven't been anywhere where i saw exito and this probably um i saw a lot of people coming in here last night going to the grocery store but this is the mall plaza you know so you if you stay at the hotel meal you'll just be able to come right down and um get whatever you need there's also a little food court in here too you know and uh you'll be able to get a chance to see a lot of the people walking around in the city such as that young lady right there you feel me i'm saying and there's a bunch of people you know if you speak english they're gonna be looking at you because they ain't because they, they don't see gringos in um in a place like this but anyway i'm gonna walk down here to the food court i'm gonna show y'all what that looked like and y'all can check that part out and then um and then we'll get on to our next to the next adventure Colombia is ranked fourth in the world for peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trading volume, while the capital city, Bogota, is ranked seven in the list of the top Bitcoin cities with an active 87 crypto businesses. So how do Colombians view crypto? Well, 80% of Colombians show a willingness to invest in cryptocurrencies, while more than half of Colombians aged 25 to 40 have already invested in crypto or expressed interest in buying other cryptocurrencies. A third of Colombian crypto owners have already carried out transactions using cryptocurrencies. Colombia saw a major boost in crypto use as a store of wealth as well as for transactional purposes in 2020, with peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms and exchanges recording historic growth Local Bitcoins reported that Colombia accounted for 11.3% of its global volume in 2020, making it one of the firm's main markets alongside of Russia and Venezuela. Transaction volumes on Buddha.com, one of Latin America's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, grew by at least 350% between 2019 and 2020 in Colombia, with an active user base on the platform increasing by 125% to 16,092 according to the data provided by the exchange. Alright fam, so this is Plaza de Comidas. It's kind of early, so that's why you don't see no really nobody in here like that. Nobody's coming in here to eat lunch at no 9 30 in the morning 10 o'clock in the morning so you know a lot of this stuff is closed right now but anyway you get the idea when i got arrived here yesterday there was a lot of people sitting over here in this uh food court sitting down eating you know and i thought it was kind of unique but anyway uh yeah so about walking back through the ball plaza it's not that big 
just so you know. Um, a bunch of shoes, stores, and clothing, and like you just saw, the food, the food court and all of that. So, but anyhow, um, we walk down on the other end. If you happen to have a Bank of Columbia uh, account, you know, which you probably won't. But anyway, you know, you could go to the, um, you can get money out of here as well. There's a lot of people down here in line for that. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, connected, like I said, right next to the hotel. And, um, you know, you just walk downstairs and walk right in. And I think the, um, I think the hours of operation is from 7 to 9, 7 a.m. to 9. But I think this store, that's what time the, uh, this Olympica opens up, I think. Yeah, the Olympica right here. So if not, it's 8 o'clock for sure. Um, but I don't see no hours of operation on the door. But anyhow, you know, you get the idea. So you come here early, you know, if you're an early riser. And, um, you know, go down to the get your goods if you need it or not you know but anyway um walking by here oh i guess this place where people pay a remittance place pick up cash and all that kind of stuff like that so if you happen to have a bank columbia account then you can come here and um pick that up they got a super reels and um and some place that you can apply for credit but you know if you're a tourist you probably ain't gonna be trying to apply for no credit no way but anyway let me um let y'all get an idea of what it is walking in and out of here, and then uh, we'll go to the next stop. Colombia also boasts of the highest number of Bitcoin ATMs in Latin American country. According to Coin ATM Radar, the country has 59 Bitcoin ATM tellers with 33 in Bogota, the capital alone. In contrast, Panama has only 17 Bitcoin ATMs, the second largest in the region. Colombia's first commercial bank to pilot a crypto service program. Banco de Bogota will use this test sandbox to explore business models and risks around it by crypto assets. A Colombian commercial bank that was established in 1870 has now started a trial to cryptocurrency services through a sandbox project that's set up by the country's financial regulator. Banco de Bogota said Monday that the pilot program begins this will begin with allowing bank to explore business models and risk associated with handling crypto assets according to a portfolio report all right fam so as you just saw we over here at this uh we had a museum i forgot the name of it already that quick but you just saw it here in a moment we about to walk in but right now you know i just met up with my guy eddie from Black Choco Tours. So that's one of the reasons why we are here today, you know, to be able to tour the inner city of Kibdo in the state of Choco. All right, so I'll let y'all meet Mehdi in a second from Black Choco Tours, and then we'll go ahead and get started with our first stop here at the museum. The sandbox from the financial superintendent of Colombia has aimed to provide a joint test space between digital ecosystems and the national government in terms of crypto assets. The bank will select a limited group of clients for pilot programs who will be given the option to make cryptocurrency deposits and withdrawals using Banco de Bogota's mobile and virtual banking channels. As reported by Coindesk, Colombia saw a major growth in cryptocurrency use as a store of wealth as well as transactional purposes in 2020. Peer-to-peer -peer crypto marketplace Local Bitcoins said Colombia accounted for 11.3 of its global volume in 2020, making it one of the firm's main markets alongside of Russia and Venezuela. Unos componentes vegetales 
y también tiene un componente vegetal, especialmente del cusumbí. Vegetales y animales. Tiene el pene del cusumbí. Y lo que se cree, el principio, es que como es animal sexualmente muy activo, esa capacidad la transfiere a los hombres cuando están perdiendo su virilidad. Y en nuestros pueblos, las personas mayores se toman unos traguitos siempre de eso, que dio un viagra natural. Pero los jóvenes no podemos tomar eso, porque no lo necesitamos. No lo necesitamos. Entonces no podemos tomar porque podemos, nos puede una enfermedad que se llama priaprismo. Priaprismo es que el pene se queda erecto. Sí, entonces los jóvenes no está prohibido consumir esa botella. Entonces mire que es un principio como un animal está transfiriendo a un humano eh, su capacidad. La cebra nace blanca y le van saliendo sus vetas con el pasar de los días. Inicialmente la veta sí es marrón y luego va tornándose a un color negro. Pero lo más importante de esto es que la cebra es el animal con la mayor capacidad de almacenamiento en su cerebro. Entonces cuando la madre cebra tiene su cría, espera que le salgan todas las vetas en su cuerpo, las graba en su cerebro, cuando suelta su cría de la manada se puede ir. Y millones de años después, o miles de años después, o cientos de años después, o eh, años después, puede regresar a la manada y la madre va a identificarla en medio de todas las demás. change and through a sandbox program this potential is already beginning to be realized in the subdeveloped country that has been recognized for its place in the drug market but it's not well known for real opportunities that it brings to its future investors the pilot program could change the perception of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies around the world and could influence colombia to consider it as a valid investment for its own citizens, as well as the future part of Colombia's stock market and its essential future ec economic infrastructure. Colombia is paving the way and this country may soon be considered the first option for retirement of Bitcoin millionaires and Bitcoin investors all over the world who will know that their Bitcoin wealth is appreciated in a beautiful country that still has much to explore. Okay, family, so what you see right here is a wall of all of the beautiful queens or reinas in Colombia. You have Miss Universes, you have Miss Chocos, Miss Buenaventuras, Miss United States or Estados Unidos, all right here. So you can see why, you know, Colombia is known for one of them countries for la mujer, mujeres es bonitas, bonitas mujeres. And you can see it right here, illustrated right here in the museum with just all of these women right here on the wall. It ranges from the year 1957 all the way through 2015. But most recently, they have another young lady named Diana Mar, Diana Mar, I think. She's 2022 Miss Choco, so I guess she'll go to the next pageant, um, the Miss Columbia pageant, and then from there, if she wins that, then she can go to the Miss Universe pageant. But anyway, you know what I mean? This right here just illustrates the type of beauty that this company, that this country, excuse me, possesses in La Mujeres, okay? So, you know, listen, man, I encourage y'all to come visit this. The part of the museum that we're in right now is um, celebrating all of the uh, Afro-Latino Afro women. 
within Columbia and their accomplishments. And then you saw earlier with some of the shots they got, Michelle Obama, Oprah Winfrey, Maya Angelou, even though she was married to a Blanco, you know what I'm saying? And then Rosa Parks and stuff like that. You know, Toni Morrison, people, so they, doing a good job of trying to bring together the African-American culture as well as the Colombian Afro culture here in Colombia. But this is a, definitely something that you kind of want to experience. It's rather unique. I've never seen it before. So, you know, I like it. But anyway, we'll see you on the next clip, yo. Cryptocurrency exchange Gemini will soon offer frictionless Bitcoin trading in Colombia for its customers of the largest bank, Bank Colombia. The company stated in a made in a statement. However, it is unclear whether the users will be able to withdraw the funds, a vital feature for achieving financial sovereignty that Bitcoin enables. The partnership is part of the government sponsored pilot program. It will launch on December of 2021, giving an initial cohort of Bank Columbia customers a seamless on and off ramp to trade Bitcoin through an exchange. The partnership also serves as an important step towards strategic expansion of Gemini's presence in Latin America. Gemini's principal strategy of corporate development, Cynthia Del Pazo Garcia, stated and made in a statement. We also look forward to working closely with the Colombian crypto ecosystem and supporting crypto products that empower Colombians to take control of their financial lives. The Colombian government launched a one-year pilot program through the country's financial regulator, superintendent, to bring Bitcoin and cryptocurrency services to the citizens of the straightforward fashion. Crypto is a borderless asset by nature and they are committed to expanding crypto access to individuals across the globe. Bank Colombia is a part of the Bank Colombia group and holding the company that owns Bitasmo, the largest bank in Panama and Central America, BAM from Guatemala and Banco Arcola, which serves customers in El Salvador. The group had 17.8 million customers as of December 31st, 2020, according to a numbers report. Blockchain can and will be used to help Colombia's economy. Blockchain strategist David Mijas on the future says on the future of technology. David Mieja is a blockchain strategist and engineer from software development firm Talos Digital, which has offices in Medellin as well as in New York, Montreal, and Austin, Texas. Mieja and his team are currently working on the five applications that use blockchain technology, ranging from fields such as insurance to money handling. The Bogota Post visited Talos and spoke with me AI about the appropriate use of blockchain, how technology can be applied in Colombia, and the importance of keeping it human. In the world where companies opt to use blockchain, to handle a problem that could often be solved using conventional solutions, Yeha insists that blockchain should only be used for adding value and making things better while at the same time reducing inefficiencies and making things more transparent and robust. With blockchains, everyone can see who's getting what, so it would be very difficult to scam. The tide goes out and you know who's swimming naked. All right, family, so man, this tour, man, this museum is actually pretty awesome, man. There's a lot of rich history, you know, concerning the African-American people, excuse me, or the African people, should I say, who was stolen from America, I mean, from uh, Africa. But anyway, you know what I mean? This right here behind me is a depiction of the chips that were used to bring over on here. I don't see Christopher Columbus on another one of them. Up. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Uh, look at this one here. Y'all should know the movie Amistad, right? You heard of the movie Amistad, 
Well, that was the actual ship that they used to transport the Africans over to the quote unquote new world, you know? And um, man, I don't know, man. I'm in my feelings right now because some of this stuff looking at it made me mad, especially that, that last room we was in where you saw the yokes of iron that's talked about in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that was around our necks for, um, you know, not following the law, statutes, and commandments, man. You know, so it's really real, man. You know what I mean? It's actually touching to be in here to see what our people and our ancestors went through. Man, let me walk over here and show y'all this one picture, man. This really, when I walked in here, it really actually made me mad as hell, you know what I'm saying, inside. You know, look at this, man. You see this picture up here, man? Look at that. Well, you had a, the white slave masters, you know what I'm saying, at the table. And you see the baby right here, man? He's eating food off the fucking floor. You know what I'm saying? They had no respect for our people, man. You know what I'm saying? Treating us like BS. But it's okay, though, because they're going to get theirs back double. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway... Um, look here, man. Y'all got to come to the Black Choco Tours, man. Black Choco Tours, and you get an opportunity to be able to, you know, experience some of this. When we get out of here, I'm gonna um, talk with my man Eddie, you know what I'm saying, the face of the business, so y'all can get an opportunity to meet him, and he'll be able to explain to you, you know, exactly what it is that you're gonna get when you come to Black Choco Tours. But you got to come to keep though. You can't go no, ain't no, you're not gonna get this experience nowhere else in Colombia. Nor do I even think that this kind of museum is anywhere else in Colombia. You know, so you have to come here, you know, in order to be able to get this experience. And all of my people, mi gente, I encourage you, you know what I'm saying, to come here, man. This is absolutely, I'm gratified. If I don't do nothing else for the rest of the day, this right here made the trip. You see what I'm saying? Because I got an opportunity to come this close to my history and heritage you know what i'm saying and you know us as a people we only go we can only go so far back with our history our family history you know what i'm saying but this here gives you an eye a bird's eye view into the history of our people in its totality you understand what i'm saying so you know i challenge you guys to experience this man you know but uh, i got my shades on so you can't see no tears man because it actually is kind of pissing me off to see you know more what of what we went through as a people man and having to deal with but you know at the same time you know i'm, I'm happy for where we at we can definitely do better but you know we only can everybody has to put forth efforts in order to be able to make this happen, man. You know what I'm saying? But it'll get better, you know what I mean? Follow those laws, statutes, and commandments written in Leviticus, man. Or Exodus, I mean, excuse me. Well, Leviticus and Exodus. Because the first five books of the La Biblia is the law. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoot. That's Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. You know? Uh, uh, so, you know, hey, man. I just challenge you, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't travel to Colombia just for Mujeres. Come to Colombia, man, and get a little bit of history. And trust me, they got it here. All right, we'll see y'all on the next one. All right, family, so this is Eddie Moya from Black Choco Tours. Me and him met when we was in Cali, man, and he's a real cool brother, man. You know what I'm saying? But this is his hometown, Quibdo, in the state of Choco in the country of Colombia. So, Eddie, man, you know, explain a little bit about yourself and the company Black Choco Tours. Okay, man. My name is Eddie, you know, I was born in Choco, so I'm, uh, I'm one of the owners of Black Choco Tours, so you gotta, you gotta come here to have a black experience. This is a Afro-tourism company, so where everybody, you know, everybody black, the, the diaspora can come and we can, you know, connect and talk about and, you know, and find ourselves. So this is a black department, and uh, yeah, you gotta come here, so it's electric. No doubt. So where can they find you on social media in order to be able to make connections? Okay, now we have uh, Black Shopper Tours, it's uh, Instagram, and uh, yeah, for now this is the... This is the, um, the way to connect with you. Yeah, yeah, the way to connect. Communication, Thank you. Thank yeah. You, Do you have like an email or a website that they can look at or? Oh yeah, yeah, yes sir. Like the email is um blackchocotours.com is the website yes the website okay so family i'll leave the information down in the description for you to be able to make connection with them the instagram link and also the website and um is there anything else that you want to say to the family particularly about this museum oh no this is a really you know if you come to kido you cannot boy you know come here because 
of young disease, everything black, blackness, diaspora, Africans, African Americans, Jamaicans, so you can find everything. So this is cool. We've been here for two hours and man, this this is amazing. Definitely, so. definitely. I right, appreciate you. Yeah, family, so we made it, we had the end of the tour right here, you know what I mean, we ended up in the um, movie room right here, I thought these pictures were unique, they got pictures of all the uh, the black Oscar winners here, you know, you got Sidney Poitier over there um, in 19, uh, shucks, I forgot what year that was, you know what I'm saying, but the picture on the wall, and you got Spike Lee for, you know, being the, uh, the uh, director, producer, whatever, with the Oscar, then you see right here, you got... Denzel Washington for Training Day in 2002. You got uh, Jamie Foxx for for Ray in 2004, and then you got uh, Forrest Whitaker down there at the bottom for the Last King of Scotland in 2006. Man, you also got Danny Glover over there, 1946, whatever movie that was. I didn't know he even make, was making movies in 1946. Maybe that might be his birth year. And then you got Halle Berry over there. For that uh, crazy movie she was in with that uh, with the white boy, um, Broke Back Mountain. I think that's what it was. I'm not sure what it was, but anyway, crazy they give her a damn Oscar for the damn playing a whore. You know what I'm saying? And then playing Denzel Washington playing a thug. You know what I'm saying? But it's crazy. But anyway, man, I thought this room was unique. They got a lot of um, all of the black actors that they I guess could remember. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout out, shout out to the Sigma Gamma Roll 1922. You know. They got uh Hattie McDaniel. Hattie McDaniel in here. I didn't I didn't realize that she was a um was a uh actor until now, you know what I'm saying? I didn't understand her significance, but you know what I'm saying? There she go right there, Hattie McDaniel. So shout out to Sigma Gamma Road 1922. Y'all up in y'all all the way down here represented in Quito, Colombia in the state of Choco. So yeah, man. You know how in the world they got damn Michael B. Jordan in here. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all didn't know what Michael B. Jordan's name was, his middle name is Bakari. So Michael Bakari Jordan, just for a little bit of information for you guys. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, this is a real unique experience. I challenge you guys to get yourself to keep dope and come on over here and check out this this uh, African Museum of History, man. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much what it is. And, um, you know, you're going to get much more than what you bargained for. The price of the uh, is well worth it. You know, we was in here for basically two and a half hours getting this information. And I really enjoyed it. But the one thing is, it's in Spanish. So you need to know Spanish, you know, unless you come here with a bunch of Americans and then you got an American tourist or somebody that's a part of the group that can translate what it is that they're explaining. But either way, it doesn't matter because you can come here and listen to the information in Spanish and get, you know, a lot of cultural history that way. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, practice Spanish, you know. Cause they're definitely going to be interactive, ask you some questions. You def they'll be here to answer questions for you and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, man, I definitely challenge you to make make it happen. But anyhow, you know, we're getting ready to get up out of here. So, uh, I don't know where we're going next, but, you know, we're going somewhere. And trust me, we're going to capture it on film. <laughs> Yeah, 
family. So you see us, we out here on the motos, riding through the streets of Quito Choco. Hopefully y'all enjoying the program. Much more information, much more sights to see, sights and sounds to show you here in the city of Quito. Don't forget to hit that like button for me one time. Leave your comments down in the comment section. All the information for what we're doing today, I'll leave down in the description area for you to go ahead and grab that. But anyway, let's get back to the sights and sounds of Quito, Colombia, baby. Right now, everyone's all hot and bothered with blockchain Mie I told the Bogota Post, describing the standard conversation topics at some of Colombia's biggest tech conventions. A lot of people talk about the blockchain and use it as a buzzword, but they don't realize that it's a tool you have to find the right case use for, a use case for, and the right time to use it. What's most important, he stated, is knowing that the blockchain technology can and should be used for in other words, trying to find inefficiencies in the market and making most of them. For an example, one of the projects Talos is working on is a, the moment uses blockchain as a ledger to hold information for insurance companies, acting as more of a secure and robust virtual database, which does not rely just on one should it go down. A good case for blockchain insurance information blockchain is basically a database and bait and because it's not one in a particular place it's not likely to come down to be dependent upon one point of failure which is very useful he also explained although blockchain is a technology in its own right the cryptocurrency bitcoin continues to be thought of as the sole barometer for all blockchain activity which mieha finds problematic Bitcoin, he believes, does not account for human nature. There are very few players that are actually mining Bitcoin and the requirements to do so are quite high. So the idea is that it was supposed to be democratic, that everyone was going to have access to it. Falls apart and it becomes a fidual system, he says. Another downfall with Bitcoin, he added, is that it's mineable is finite. So once the last Bitcoin is mined, you're going to have a fixed supply, which means automatic deflation. Because there are going to be more people, more demand, less coins, and prices are going down. That's why, in some respects, I'm very conservative about security, about making things work. And I'd have rather have stuff than be new and sexy, he also stated. When it comes to the implementation of blockchain technology on the government level, Mieja and the president of Colombia also praised Family, how y'all enjoying it right now, man? We in Central, man. You see a lot of movement going on with the motos, man. That's what happens around here. You hit, now we right back at it again. So, I'm enjoying the ride. Relatively safe. It's safer than the other cities in Colombia. Like, it's safer than Bogota for sure. Definitely safer than Cartagena. I'm talking about riding on these motos. And it's certainly uh, safer than Medellin. So, you know, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? are praised for supporting technology, particularly during the um, presidential campaign of Petro and championing its potential fight to never-ending struggle against the corruption in Colombia. It's great that the president is actually aware of this idea. And yes, blockchain is great for shining a light on the system if implemented correctly. 
He said, suggesting that it has a capacity to expose scandals such as the recent dam crisis that occurred in May last year. With blockchains, you'll be able to see all of the registered players, then everybody will be able to see who's getting what. In terms of his predictions, the future is blockchain and can and will be helped to use the Colombia's economy. We are all on databases anyway, he said, highlighting an example of the cedula, which is identification cards. And the other effective use cases could be the use of blockchain for storing medical data and the implementation of smart contracts for real estate purchases. However, in order for the implementation to succeed, the importance of keeping the technology file proof is very, very high. You have to remember that you are dealing with human beings and technology serves the people. You need to make sure that it does not make the people slaves. family so i'm out here by the river you can see the nice good keep those sign out here we're gonna end the episode right here as you can see because it started raining and you can hear the uh the festivities the parade out there in the street out there so you know what i mean tomorrow i'll bring you more of the uh festival here on on camera so that way you can enjoy the festivities and if you ever make it out to keep though then you know what to expect it's during the fall time the uh san pacho festival so you know what i'm saying this is what the atmosphere is. I give you a brief look out here so my camera won't get all get all destroyed out here and stuff like that. But yeah, we're gonna end it right here and then uh, we'll check you out tomorrow when we go on, I think we're going on the river tomorrow. So we'll check it out then and go from there. So hopefully you enjoyed the program and you learned something today. And uh, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode. Ciao.